Bangalore, India. It might not be on the well-worn Indian tourist trail, but I'm captivated by a city that still retains its old charm. Feeling blessed. While being catapulted into the 21st century. Technology companies here are bringing in cash and driving emerging middle class, looking for a good time. To Bangalore! To Bangalore! And that's exactly what I'm interested in. I'm not here for bits, bites and broadband. I'm here for booze, basmati and a bit of fast bowling. Woo! Sweating up a storm in Bangalore. When I studied high school geography, it was Bangalore. Now it's officially Bengaluru, but the name hasn't really stuck. Whatever you call it, as far as Indian cities go, it's classed as the most livable. But this isn't the only title Benga Bengaluru holds claim to. They call it the Garden City, the Silicon Valley of India, and my personal favorite, the pub capital of India. As a winemaker, it's the progressive dining and drinking scene here that really excites me. Yes. But before I loosen my belt and lubricate my lips, there is something I've always wanted to do if I ever had the chance to come to yes. India. Are you ready to bowl a few over? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yes, sir! Cricket is worshipped with a passion in India, and Raja Bakal is like a local celebrity here, having represented the city's Indian Premier League team, the Royal Challengers Bangalore. So you think I'll need a helmet? Obviously, <laughs> when you're facing me, <laughs> I'm not going to go easy on you. Even though it's not a match, just a training session, these balls are going to be streaming down the pitch like lightning. But oh. hey, I've got nothing to lose apart from my dignity. You're going to need this for sure. <laughs> we'll see. And potentially my virility. Are you right there? <laughs> I'm not going into the firing line without guarding my family jewels from the oncoming missiles. What do I get if I hit you out of the park? Anything. <laughs> Anything? Anything you ask for. Oh well. First, first drinks are on me if you bowl me out. Definitely. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, it looks like drinks are on me. Here we go. Watch the ball, Eddie. Let's see what he's got. Come on. Incoming, high over the ball. Oh, he's running! Better, 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 buddy. You're getting there. Yeah? Coach is watching. Watch, what's the next one? It's gonna be your head. <laughs> oh. oh, he wasn't kidding. Nice try. <laughs> You're scared, buddy. I saw you. You're scared. Oh, red shot, Eddie! Now you got me out a couple of times, so I think the first round's on me, the second round's probably on me, and the third <laughs> round's probably on me. But before we get into the drinking, it'd be a crime not to take advantage of Raju's local knowledge. Luck would have it, he fancies himself as a bit of a foodie. So what are we eating? It's called a thali. Thali? Thali. Yeah. Thali. Yeah. It's a uh, South Indian thali, which has rice, different curries, some sambar and rasam some curd and some sweet. It's like the, you can say, the staple uh, diet of most of the Bangaloreans. Mai is a local favorite. And as with a lot of Indian establishments, it's all vegetarian. Wow, that's damn good. But that doesn't mean the selection is limited. Quite the opposite, actually. You're the mung beans, right? I've never had mung beans that taste good. Um, Rumi's the first thing I say no to. This is called kosambri. OK. This is the main part of any South Indian dish. This has to be there. There's a lot to be said for vegetarian food. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's undersold. I, I think it's healthy. 
You just made it taste really good. I've never had Indian food like this before. With a belly full of food, it's time to make good on my bet. Beautiful. Bangalore has a diverse and growing nightlife scene. After work drinks is taking off at places like Rooftop Terrace Brick Lane, where you can sip cocktails and toast a local wine. There's also more urban settings. First round's on me, <laughs> second round's on me, and then I believe I the guess, third round I is guess, on me as I well. I six rounds all on you. <laughs> the beer club is Bangalore's first craft brewery, and beers are in no short supply. But alcohol consumption in India is in general quite low. Drinking is often still considered taboo, and there are religious restrictions for many. But with that emerging middle class, there comes a new drinking culture and a new level of acceptance. The city's rocking, man. I'm impressed with Bangalore. How the city is, it impresses everyone. Okay, so my mission for tonight, enough beer, it's time to get the locals drinking wine. So we're off to a rooftop bar where the party's in full swing. Should we hook these guys up? Definitely. All right, let's rock and roll. You want to you, would you mind if we shared some wine with you? <laughs> the wine is out and I've made new friends already. This is why I've coined the phrase, wine is like social glue. Or maybe we're just a few rounds in and we're feeling a little bit festive. To Bangalore! To Bangalore! India's wine industry has only just sprouted up in the last few decades. Around Bangalore, there are almost 20 wineries. So to help me fill my glass with the best, I've instilled the help of local wine guru, Himanshu Asha. Himanshu. Good morning, Eddie. How are you? Good. Good. Actually, honestly, I'm a little bit shady, but... <laughs> you ready for breakfast? Himanshu knows the wine industry here like the back of his hand, but also knows a day of drinking calls for a solid start. The breakfast of champions here in the south of India is an idli. Go with your hand and just taste it just raw. Yeah. It's like fluffy, huh? Yeah, it's fluffy, it's like kind of melt, melt in your mouth. A savoury cake made by a steaming batter of fermented black lentils and rice. So it may not sound too appealing, but team it up with a chutney or a sambal and it's a winning combo. Trust me. Nice, fresh, great start for the morning. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then you just dunk it in and off you go. I've never been to an Indian winery before, so yeah. what, what have you got organised? We've got two wineries. Yep. Um, we've got the oldest and the newest. A little over an hour from Bangalore city, and I'm transported to a place where I feel like I can breathe. Open spaces, friendly locals, it's beautiful. Yeah, he's a good boy! <laughs> the Nandi Valley has a right mix of elevation and granite-rich soils, which makes ideal for grape growing. Plus, the granite posts make the vineyards look really cool. Good morning. Hi, Arish. Hey. Mohit, meet Eddie. Eddie, Hi. Mohit. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Arish. Hi, Arish. Hi, Arish. Arish. Yeah. Nice to meet you. SDU Winery is the new kid on the winemaking block. But I must say, vineyard manager Haresh runs a tight ship. This vineyard is so well kept. We have Shira, we have Kebane, then we have Shadone. Yep. And uh, we do have uh, Suino Bla, a few plants. Okay. And uh, we do have uh, Shenin Bla, a few, pla a few plants over here. So we generally harvest during April okay. and March. We get one crop by two prunings. Okay, so we're in the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. And you harvest at the same time as the Southern Hemisphere. Southern Hemisphere, yeah. Wow, you're right. really confusing me now. <laughs> yeah. Now, the mention of soil probably doesn't float everyone's boat. But to us wine geeks, it's a topic that gets us giddy. So it's red soil which is very similar to the one which you find in Australia. Yeah. So because of this, it has very good porosity with good water holding capacity. Mm -hmm. And there won't be any clogging of the water. Yeah. So it is like natural air conditioning to the plants. SDU's wine is produced under the Deva label and it hit the market in 2012. It's a schmick looking establishment from India's first female wine entrepreneur, SDU founder Shampavi Hingorani. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet yeah. you too. Welcome to SDU. Uh, great to be here. Oh wow, this is a very formal. This is the way the Indian greet. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is the garland. Okay, the garland. 
It smells yeah. beautiful. Yeah. We wanted to keep it simple. Yeah. And, we, and India is like the wine market is still growing. Mm. The growth is 25%. Yeah. So we have a lot of new, new wine drinkers coming to the market every year. So we keep it very simple, very easy drinking. Make sure that even the connoisseurs will enjoy it, the wine connoisseurs. That's what our aim is and I think we've almost achieved that. In a country where white wines are still finding their place, Deva are carving their niche with a classic Chardonnay. That's magnificent. This is, are we really in India? Oh my God, this... Yeah. You know, that, that was close to a Chablis in style. I think your winemaker's going to be asking for a pay rise soon. <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to the red now. Juicy, mm. just pure, lush juiciness. Where is India at in terms of loving wine? Um, the, I realise that the youngsters are all drinking wine. So people like yourself? Myself and younger than me, <laughs> drinking <laughs> wine. <Yeah. laughs> um, and they're slowly taking to a wine because it's a healthier option yeah. than hard alcohol and drinking, I mean, people, if you go to restaurants, you always see now bottles of wine on their table. Mm. And that shows uh, that India is evolving. And there's a lot of experimentation with wine and food, Indian food in particular. And I think uh, we're just uh, awakening a revolution between the youth and the uh, I love that word. Experimenting with wine. Cheers, 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 cheers to that. Cheers to that. Cheers. From an industry newcomer to India's second oldest winery. Grover Vineyards was founded back in 1988 by Kanmal Grover after eight years of experimenting with the best varieties and locations all over India. We have the, we have the Sauvignon Blanc. Today, Kanmal's son, Kapil, is the custodian of what has become one of India's most established wine brands. What's the secret? I think good grapes. I mean, we've been taught that from day one. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah. It has a dryness of Sancerre, and it's not, you know, overly fruity like New Zealand wines are. So for Sauvignon Blanc, I think you've nailed it on the head. Well, now this is a Viognier, but it's a 2012. Right. The 2013 is under preparation. I mean, this is showing that India can make great white wines as well. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. It's more than liking it, it's yeah. pretty special. This has just got some purity and delicacy that, I mean, when you have delicacy in a wine and it makes you think, then you know you're onto a winner. Yeah. But now I'm go uh, going to request for the rosé. Number one, that's my favorite label. I'm pretty chuffed to hear that Kapil has a soft spot for my favorite style. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do love a good rosé. Yeah. But it's got, it's got structure. Uh, it stands up to the spices of Indian cuisine and uh, it's chill, it's a lovely colour. Yes. I, I really don't know why more Indians don't drink the rosé. For me, this is the wine for India. That's a big call. <laughs> it's a big call. It's a big call, but... Don't want to be shining your shoes too much, but... <laughs> I think after those whites that we've had and now with this rosé, you're leading the way. Oh, great. Definitely leading the way. Well, we're just about to make your journey even more worthwhile. I've heard through the grapevine that Grover's signature drop, La Reserve, is a definite high point. It's really our flagship uh, brand, and most people would say, if you ask them which is the best Indian wine, would say La Reserve. Just smelling it is pretty wonderful. It's normally 80% Cab and 20% Shiraz. Okay. Uh, Plus minus 10%. Yeah. You know what really fascinates me about good red wine is just like, yes, it's power, but it's just concentration of flavor. Where it's just this you know, big ball of flavor that just pops in your mouth. Mm. Now, well done. Very, very, very good job. I'd be very interested to taste this in 10 years' time. So, so your idea would be to come every every year for the next 10 years to keep seeing how it Yeah, goes. I think that's a great idea. And it's a great idea. have to sort of follow the evolution. evolution. I'm just going to put my name on this barrel. Okay. What a privilege. Wine snobs, take note. There is good wine in India. 
actually strike that great wine in India. I think Kapil is my new hero. That barrel is coming straight home with me. Mm. Bangalore in India's state of Karnataka is a cosmopolitan city at the forefront of the country's newfound journey into wine. Christ University here has pioneered the country's first diploma of wine studies. A nice crisp and probably a slightly citric with, with hints of green apple. They also offer courses in hotel management and culinary science for budding chefs. As a part of their uh, program, uh, as an elective which is going to be evaluated, they do prepare uh, Indian food and then pair it with Indian wine. It's Chef Shashil's job to groom and guide the gastronomic talents of this determined group. The dishes are a diverse mix of cuisines from villages all over the country and the smells are intoxicating. Hello, Chef Meet Hi, Hi, Hi. Hi. meeting you again. Good afternoon. We've been doing this research on um, food from Karnataka to find out uh, you know, how many people stay, what are the different types of uh, caste and the communities that are uh, living over here. And then we go and uh, try to you know, uh, map them and then make their food. So there are about close to about 47 different communities that we have found out till now. How many cuisines actually do you have? Uh, at least about 500. Okay, good. Now, now, if you look at in Karnataka as, as a state, yeah. putting together even the tribal cuisines, each of them have their own way of eating food, doing things. So it's, 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 very, it's, it's a huge ocean. The range of flavours and dishes is staggering, but whoever thinks that wine shouldn't be on the table here needs to step into this modern day classroom. Himan Shu and I are happily joining a panel of experts to give the students feedback on their dishes and wine pairings. Notably, Kripal, the editor of Food Lovers magazine, and Sanjay, the head chef from well-respected restaurant Tatuov. Good to be sitting here with uh, a bunch of foodies yeah. and wine lovers. Cheers, Kripal. Cheers. Thank you very much for having us. Some may turn their noses up at Indian food and wine pairing, but it can be done. Power, we've got all these flavors. Yeah. What's the answer to Indian food and wine pairing? You know, I think the important thing with me having Indian food is to make sure your wines are chilled. You know, so I'd probably reach for this glass of Sauvignon Blanc if I'm having food like this. It's kind of mellow. Yeah. It, it's very even toned. There are no sudden surprises. All right. So Sauvignon Blanc is the ticket. I'd pick regardless white, rosé or red, and it will work magically with a few and democratically with all. Wow, that's poetry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're made for this. <laughs> so basically speaking, it's a nice clean flavored wine that's right. with just a, a pure focus on being fruity. A little bit sweet, have a bit of depth, adds to what you're eating and it kind of you know, completes the package. That's right. And then you can enjoy the big full body, you know, big, rich, plump, fat wines af right. after your dinner. Absolutely. I think that works. I will go for the Shiraz. You go for the Shiraz? Wow, he's thrown a curveball in there. <laughs> I will not go for a white wine. I'm a, I, I love red wine, so yeah. I'll just blindly go for a Shiraz. But does it work? Uh, yes, it does work. In fact, the Big Banyan uh, Shiraz is one of my favorites. So. Do you work at Big Banyan? I, 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 I will make that work. <laughs> He would drink it just reading the newspaper if he could. <laughs> he could pair it with the you know, Mumbai Times or whatever it is. Whether you're grabbing a chilled Sav Blanc, a fruity red, or even if you're in Shashil's camp with Shiraz, it seems wine and Indian food can go hand in hand, like curry and chapati. A group that always has a bottle of vino at the table is the Bangalore Wine Club. He Manchu was once the president of this thirsty tribe of aficionados who started holding regular events more than a decade ago. The idea is um, to, to experience new wines, yep. uh, both Indian and uh, the other wines which are available in the market. 
and um, identify new uh, hotels in the city, which are coming up constantly. A typical wine club event would be at a five-star hotel, but President Chanda has decided to do something a little bit different tonight. No effort has been made to try and pair the wine with the food. Nice. So those, who like, those who like white with any food will drink white. Right. Those who like red with any food will continue to drink red. So all the members are okay with that? Yeah! yeah. yeah. All, all, all game for all one game event room. like that. Yep. A casual Indian restaurant that serves up a modern version of truck stop type food and a couple of bottles. Who says it can't be done? <laughs> cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Indian wines really impressed me, and I'm excited to bring my new finds back to Hong Kong. Hollywood Road in Central is home to a variety of interesting wine bars, and I want to hear what these bartenders think about cracking Indian wine like Grover's La Reserve. Have you ever tried wine from India? No, I never. So, man, open a glass. Can we get a glass? Let's open it up. You've got to try this. This is going to blow your sure. mind. Quinnery is one of the top bars in Hong Kong, and the bartenders here, like Samuel, know their stuff. Well, wow, it's really good. Can you believe that's made in India? No. If you're not telling me it's Indian, no, I'm not sure. Is it from California or New Zealand or something? Unbelievable, huh? No, no way. <laughs> it's really good. Don't judge a book by its cover or get hung up on regions. Italian or Indian, really? It doesn't matter. It's all about enjoying the experience.